So the first film we're going to talk about is Limbo by Ben Chirac. Um, so basically, um, the plot of Limbo centers around um, a young musician called Omar, who has um, recently um, sort of migrated to a remote island in Scotland to escape um, the war in Syria. And there he kind of is part of a cultural awareness program where he's introduced a lot of different um, immigrants who are seeking a better life outside of um, poverty and famine and war-torn areas. And it's all about um, how they kind of begin to belong and feel also kind of like a a duality between um, belonging and feeling quite isolated from this culture and how they kind of integrate themselves and how they they build relationships and friendships. And it kind of it swings through a lot of comedy, um, a lot of com- comedic undertones and to quite um, harrowing drama. So it's a, a very much quite a balanced film in the way that it explores kind of like the migrant crisis and things like that. Great. And what, what are your thoughts on the film? You know, um, for a film like this, I've not seen a funnier opening sequence in quite a while than in Limbo. Um, I was in Stitches. I, I, you know, Obviously, people will understand that more when they see it, but the balance of comedy and drama through this film is really quite remarkable, especially, you know, with the subject matter that it's exploring. And I think that um, the characters in it have, for how kind of condensed the film it is, have so much life about them. And it does centre around the story of um, four different um, four different people who have moved recently to this um island in Scotland and how they have to find their find their own way and find themselves um in this different in this completely different place that almost almost fails to integrate them a little bit. So you have the these people that are kinda of holding on um to these connections that they've made through the most kind of absurd ways and the way that that sort of develops and it's just I I would recommend everyone to go and see this film. I've not seen um, Ben Sharrock's um, um, film um, before. I think I, I'm not sure the title for the one that was weird a couple of years ago, but it's um, made me definitely quite art, like art, making me quite. You know, I want to urgently seek that out and give it a watch. So the opening scene grabbed me from the second I saw it, and I think it's a really, really good thing for Steph to bring up there um I honestly don't think I've laughed so much at and to be clear this is this is a film that balances comedy and drama right so it's not a it's not a comedic film as such but that opening scene I don't think I've laughed at something um so much for for quite some time this is a film which balances tone perfectly in my opinion and I think that's the, the biggest demonstration of that is that opening scene the the tone of it goes a bit more somber late on it like there, there's a there's a there's a way the tone of the film develops and it's always balancing uh, humorous aspects of this kind of this refugee experience of being in this completely alien place really um and i think one thing that i enjoyed quite a lot about that is scotland and in particular scottish filmmakers have a tendency to romanticise Scotland um, and the landscape. And that's something which Sherlock's not doing here. Um, it's it, it, it comes across as quite barren and inhospitable, and that kind of gels with the experience of these refugees, G's and Omar in particular, throughout the film. And that, that, that was an interesting aspect that I actually quite liked. So it's balancing this very stressful experience is very alienating experience but also these moments of humor that you find um and there are lots of these absurdist moments which remind me a lot of um a lot of other filmmakers that i like a lot you know i, I got hints of roy anderson off it i got hits of hints of uh Ilya suleiman off it um you know like it's, it's, it's clear to me i think that those those filmmakers in particular have an influence on this and that balance of kind of like this very melancholic atmosphere with humor is handled extremely well and i think the performances underpin it extremely well also i think it's very difficult to balance the tone of a film the way that limbo does and i think it does it extremely well 
Yeah, I like the comparison with Suleiman. I'd also add Aki Karazmaki is big for this, and there's a there's a massive a massive deadpan element to it, which um, is important for Omar and the performance by Amir El Masri. I think is wonderful, um, because he's such a good foil to the effusive Scots who keep putting their foot in their mouth and or just have too much to say, whereas he has nothing to say, and he has this the perfect observer profile. Um, just walking around, he does a lot of an awful lot of walking in the movie, and there are these frequent shots of him walking down snowy roads, and um, it does evoke how long he's been journeying um, to get to that place. And I would say also that the the staging in the film is exquisite. There are these single shots which are multi-planed and have numerous points of drama within them, but he can alternate between long and medium long shots. To then going into close-up and these close-ups have these fantastic um, sort of leaning into the lens emphases um, throughout them and I think they're incredibly moving at instances particularly when you get to the stories of the two um, the two housemates who are pretending to be brothers one's from Ghana one's from Nigeria and they're pretending to be um, brothers in order to um, get their asylum claim processed um, and also say that there's a, a thing which you often get in films by Suleiman, which is a kind of exaggerated understatement. Um, and there are moments where, for instance, the other housemate who's called Farad, who's played by Vikash Bai, he has a moment where he's in the classroom, which the film opens with, and the, uh, that brilliant scene that we've talked about, where he raises his hand. And when he raises his hand, it's like he's doing breaststroke. It's like his, his arm is out of the socket almost, that he's reaching up so high. But because the camera's so still, the joke registers all the more and because everybody within the frame is all kind of, are all kind of looking at the looking at the camera with this bored detached look um it just it just keeps emphasizing and redoubling in significance to, for me i should also say as a still game partisan i nearly cheered at a certain appearance in the film uh in the in the suit in the market um but i'll maybe leave that for folk to discover yeah, I mean, I would echo everything everyone said. It's, um, yeah, I mean, the tone is, is quite, um, quite amazing to you know to balance everything together, drama and comedy, and uh, it's done so well. I also would say, as you were mentioning, um, I was really particularly impressed. Of course, when you're in, like North and I think it's North and South East where that the, the filming took place, um, the Outer Hebrides. It's obviously gorgeous, but and quite barren. And that landscape is, you know, is is probably easy to make beautiful. But the way that he used like this negative space in almost all of the landscape shots, there was kind of a real beautiful thematic sort of like way in which the the each um. All the scenes were, I just was, I, I was, I, it made me really happy to be in Scotland, um, you know, uh, and also it felt quite cold and, <laughs> and barren as you suggested. Um, but I, but I just think it's, it, it was a definitively unique um, way to film, to film Scotland and, um, and it worked so well with the story and, and what they were trying, you know, the inner sort of like, um, you know, perspective of someone coming from the outside um, to the, to this this location, and I just um, yeah, I, I I can't say anything that you both that everybody hasn't said that that, but it, it, I highly recommend it. It's beautiful. I think um, I think it's worth talking about Amir El Masri's performance as well, actually, and I think it, especially in the context of um something that mark brought up which is the the use of close-ups in the film that kind of like that that sense that almost kind of like leaning into the lens and it's one of these films where a lot of the emotions especially early on in the film are quite subtle ones but with that style of shooting your subject there's really nowhere for you to hide um you know like every every slight you know movement on your face is going to be really rendered and pretty large detail right um and i think he does an absolutely excellent job because on top of that that we've mentioned about sort of like the deadpan tone and amir el masri is kind of in most of the if not every scene actually but like most of the most of the scenes and really has to sell that tone and i think the other person who does it extremely well is uh vikash bai is farhad um in particular a lot of the subtle stuff that goes on with him later in the film i think both of those performances in particular are 
standout ones. But frankly, all the supporting performances have to do it as well. You know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of segments where I struggle to see how people kept a straight face doing it, and that that kind of goes for the comedic moments as well as some of the more emotional moments. So, I think the the filmmaking itself, in terms of the the form of it, is extremely accomplished, and it tells that story visually very well. But I think the performances that Ben Schrock has got out of the actors as well. It's one of these things where they just come together really quite effectively, um, and I think that a lot, a lot's going to focus on the form of it, and I think understandably, right, because it is very good. But I don't think the the way that that's blended with the performances should be should be overlooked because that's what makes for me what, what, that's what makes the film work as a as a whole. Yeah, and it's that that thing you said, Jim, about um, the there being nowhere to hide is interesting because from that opening scene which is so much the joke in that opening scene which i won't mention because it's it, it's so good um is essentially core kind of turns on the extent to which the people in the scene are performing within a performance and that's crucial for the film i think because it's so much about learning to act a certain way and his passivity is actually a, re- a kind of a rejection it's kind of a way of saying no to certain slights that are handed his way, certain assumptions that are made of him. Um, I like too the idea that um, this is a, a Scottish movie which sort of overturns the cliche of Scotland as this great utopian nation and I, I you know, think it's fair to say it's not. It's, it's a country with numerous issues about prejudice as every country has and this has a particularly clear way of dramatizing that. And I also wanted to mention something Amanda said about the use of negative space without going too far towards the ending. There's a change in the way the images are the visu- the, the images are arranged in the in the final parts of the film. And I think that speaks to Sharik's conception of Omar's selfhood and how he gradually like walks toward a certain vision of selfhood that was denied him earlier in the film and also just want to mention that it'll probably become one of these classic slapstick sequences but the um the royal mail van which makes its merry way up to their house um possibly uh, with a letter confirming asylum in the country that's one of the that's one of the standout scenes in the film for me in the way that it constantly it constantly like goads you to laugh at it but it's actually very sad and very desperate and the fact that they're standing at the end of their driveway is it's a ter- it's a horrible image of the four of them in the frame crammed together um but still manages to be extremely funny and play on a certain kind of formal humor involving the music which another film will cover today does not do so well and um i i i love that scene and i think i love the film although i will say there's a there are parts where he's playing the oud the instrument that he plays and um, where it goes into these kind of associative montages and it's kind of it kind of hammers home the idea that the, the oud is the link to home for him and i want to watch the film again to see if i wasn't missing something something of an emotional note in these scenes because i felt a little bit cold towards them but i think I, I i my intuition is that there's something right here that i missed on first on first watch but i'm already looking forward to seeing it again I think um, also to go back to the performances, particularly um, of Omar and Farhad, I think that there seems to be, it's difficult in these films are quite almost kind of ruminate through absurdist and slapstick humour. And I think it's so difficult when you've got a script that jumps through all these kind of hoops with drama and kind of trying to find that equilibrium between the tones that... um, these characters would bounce off each other so well. It almost seems like when I was watching it, I was wondering, um, is there being quite a bit of um leeway with the script? Has there been quite a lot of improv happening on set? Has there been, because there's you know the the humor within it kind of is very much quite British, and I think when we say that, um, we don't really know what that means. What do you mean by British humor? But if you, I think if you watch the way that it channels kind of these small moments, um throughout and the way that they kind of follow each other to lead to something um later on i think the more that you you pick up through these characters and the more that the story kind of comes through on this barren remote island and and stuff it's very much it's very much a film that kind of 
almost manages to cap capture an atmosphere that you wouldn't expect to be there from the way that it's shot. It's it's very interest it's a very interesting film and I think that you know, you can't downplay how the performances have kind of brought those to the forefront. I think that a lot of that is with the performances of these characters to make um the kind of deadpan hum- humour that kind of sails it through, um, how powerful it really is. Great. So we highly recommend you check the this film out, Limbo. It's uh, going to be at Glasgow Film Festival online, and um, we'll we'll make sure that the links are in in the description as well. Thank you.